In this demo, we're going to take a short look at how we can do zero downtime updates with Terraform. So this is our simple Terraform configuration. We're using the DigitalOcean provider and we're defining a variable which just has a simple version. So what we ha have are two prepared images, a version one and a version two. And these are just simple Nginx instances for the purposes of the demo which allows us to differentiate between the two running versions. The data element in this block allows us to fetch the name of the image, the ID of the image, so that we can use it in the resource. And the resource is fairly straightforward. It's about as simple as it can get. I'm going to create two DigitalOcean droplets. I'm going to use the image from our data element and I'm going to set the name to the count index. So count index is zero based. So I will create two droplets called web zero and web one. The region, I'm just setting this to London one. And I'm going to use the smallest available image, which is a single CPU, 512 megabytes. I'm setting some tags here on the droplet and, and I'll explain why these are useful in just a minute after we've looked at the load balancer. To be able to load balance requests across our two droplets, I'm creating a DigitalOcean load balancer. I'm giving it a name and a region, and then I'm setting this droplet tag. By setting the droplet tag, what it means is that any droplets which are created inside the DigitalOcean account, which have the tag example, will automatically be added to the load balancer. And this is really useful later on because it means we never need to modify the load balancer once it's been created. Setting a forwarding rule, so the public port 80 of the load balancer is going to go to the port 80 where we have Nginx running on the droplet. And then I'm defining a health check. Again, port 80, because I don't have anything specifically prepared, it's just going to check the index and see if that's available at an interval of five seconds. As an output variable, I need to be able to get the public IP of the load balancer, so I'm just going to return that using the interpolation syntax. The first thing I need to do in order to, to test this configuration is I need to build my images. So to build my images, I'm going to use the Packer script, which is inside the Packer folder of the source repository. My Packer script is quite straightforward. I have a variable image and that's going to use the base image which is Ubuntu 16.04. I'm setting a version and then I'm defining the DigitalOcean builders. So the, the image is going to come from the user variable. The region I'm going to create the snapshot is in London 1 and again the size and a couple of other things like the SSH username and then ultimately the snapshot name. In order to install Nginx, I'm going to use a Ansible playbook. So I need Ansible installed on my, my machine to be able to do this in addition to Packer and Terraform. The playbook, again, is very, very straightforward. I'm just installing Python so that Ansible can run on the, the box. I'm configuring some tasks, so just updating my app to repository, adding the HTTPS, transports and, and a couple of other simple things. And then I'm installing Nginx. So I'm installing Nginx from, from apt and I'm going to copy my index HTML file, which are over here in my files. I'm going to copy that file based on the version that I'm going to pass to Packer and just copying that to the HTML folder. The index files, very, very straightforward, just going to output version one or version two, it's about as simple as it can get, but should be perfect for the purposes of this demo. So the first thing I need to do, even before I run my Packer or my Terraform, is I need to set a couple of environment variables. The environment variables that I need to set are the DigitalOcean token, and that's for the Terraform provider. And I need to set the DigitalOcean API token, which is used by Packer. And you set these to your values based on whatever your DigitalOcean token is, which you can get from your account settings. So let's begin. Let's be begin by building those Packer boxes. 
So I'm going to change into my packer folder and then I can run my packer build command. So I'm going to run packer build. I'm going to pass the variable to packer. In this instance, I'm passing version one because I want to build version one of an image. And then I give it the configuration file, which is my example JSON configuration. Press enter on that. And packer is now going to go and create a droplet in DigitalOcean, run the Ansible playbooks, and then create a snapshot that I can use for my image. And that will take a couple of moments. Now that the first build is completed, I just need to run the packer script again to build my version two. So I'm just going to change the variable to be two and I'm going to run that, wait for it to complete. And now we've got the second image built, we can go ahead and start taking a look at this. So the first thing that I want to do is run terraform init. And I'm doing this from the, the main sort of root folder of the source repository. So I run terraform init and that's going to download my DigitalOcean provider. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to run terraform plan with version one, and then I can apply that and create my resources. Terraform plan, setting a variable. I'm going to write that out to the output plan folder. So Terraform is telling me it's going to create three resources. That's the two droplets and the one load balancer. And I can just run and apply on that with my plan. And that's going to go ahead and create. It'll take about 30 or so seconds for that to create. But if we take a look at our DigitalOcean control panel, you can see that those resources are now being created. And if we go over to the load balancer, you can also see that the load balance is being created. So Terraform's determined that it can parallel those operations and it's going to create all three of those at the same time. So our first droplet has completed, our second droplet is just about to complete and then we're going to start to see those get registered with the load balancer and everything become available. Now we can see that Terraform is completed. We've got everything and then in the output, I can see my load balancer IP. So let's give the service a quick test. First, I'm just gonna quickly check it in my browser. And you can see there that that's returning version one. And then what I have here is a, a little test script that I'm going to use. Oh, if I change into the right folder of the root. So I'm going to run test and I'm just going to use a quick subshell command to be able to get the output from the Terraform state. And pass that as a parameter to my script. That's going to run away and then every second that's it's going to ping the load balancer and get back the version. If it can't reach the load balancer, it's going to return me service unavailable. The scripts over here in the, the repository in the root and as you can see, it's really, really simple test script there. It's just looping through using a bash script and getting the data back from using a curl and, and piping that through said. So then Let's look at what our problem is. So our problem is 
that we've created this infrastructure. We've got our droplets running, but nothing ever stays the same. So we need to update the underlying image of our droplet because we've got a new version of our software. So if we run our Terraform plan again, and this time let's specify our, our version two image that we created, Terraform is going to run and it's going to tell me that it's got to create two new resources, but it's also got to destroy two new resources. And the reason for this is that Terraform can't update things like an image on a resource because that would re requires that the, the, the machine is shut down and restarted. So it has to destroy it before it can create the new version. Now, the default behavior of Terraform is that Terraform will run that destroy step before it creates the new resources. And that's going to cause some downtime. So if I run that Terraform apply, you'll see that Terraform is now destroying my old droplets. And over on the left hand side, you're going to start to see that the service becomes unavailable. And there it goes. So I've got outage now. Terraform is currently creating the new droplets, which is using the version two of the image. And that's going to take about 30 seconds or so, or however long it takes the cloud provider to spin up those resources. But until those are created and that they're successfully registered with the load balancer, I'm going to have an outage and downtime on my, my system, which is undesirable behavior. So those droplets have been created, the old ones have been removed, and what we're going to start to see is we're going to start to see those um, returning to normal, and we'll see version 2 starting to appear over on the left-hand side. And it's just going to take a little while for those new droplets to be registered with the load balancer before that, that starts to happen. And there we go, that started, and now we've got normal service has been resumed. So that's caused downtime of a, about a minute. So how do we get around that? That's actually really, really, really straightforward. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to change the behavior of Terraform. We need to change that default behavior of destroy before create and change that to create before destroy. And we can do that using a life cycle meta parameter. So the life cycle meta parameter is, is available for pretty much every resource. It's part of Terraform core. It's not part of the individual provider. And what this is going to do when I specify create before destroy and set that to true is it's going to change the behavior of Terraform so that Terraform will now create the new droplets before removing the old. So that's going to help with our our outages when we're doing these rolling upgrades, but it's not going to completely solve the issue. And the reason it's not going to completely solve the issue is that Terraform has no understanding of your application lifecycle. All Terraform knows is that the cloud provider's API has said, I have created that resource. A created resource does not necessarily mean an available application. And the reason for that is that a an application generally has to go through an init cycle. So you're going to have to boot the virtual machine. You're going to have to run your various system D and your init scripts and things like that before the box becomes online. Then you've got to wait for your application to start. And depending on the type of your application, that could be anything from another 30 seconds or so to a number of minutes after the virtual machine's been created and started. So to get around that, again, we can use another one of the built-in features of Terraform, which is a provisioner. So by using a provisioner, I can actually write a little and execute a script, which is going to check the health of the application. So the way that this works in terms of the Terraform lifecycle is that the resource will be created. The API will acknowledge that that's up and running and Terraform will then continue to run the provisioner. So inside of the provisioner, I'm just using a really, really simple script. You can use anything as complex or as simple as you need, and it's very much dependent on your application. But I'm running this simple script and I'm passing the 
IP address of the droplet to it. So all my script is doing is, is just doing a curl and getting the HTTP status code. It's then just going to loop around and wait until it gets a response code 200. After I've had that response code 200, I'm just going to sleep for 30 seconds. And that's just an arbitrary amount of time to wait for the health checks on the DigitalOcean load balancer to pick up and start routing traffic through to my new droplet. Once all of that's done, I'm going to exit with a status code zero. And once I get a status code zero, Terraform is then going to mark the resource has been completely created successfully, and it's then going to go ahead and destroy the old resources. Of course, if I don't get a healthy status, so if my health check fails, and in this instance, I'm just checking for uh, 10 times with a three second interval, then the script is going to return with an exit code two. Terraform is going to interpret that as a failed provisioner step, and it's going to mark the resource as tainted, and it won't go on to destroy the old resource. You're going to be able to go in and correct whatever needs to be corrected and rerun your script. And again, give you that capability of having that, that rolling update. So since we've got those added into our Terraform configuration, let's just run that. So I'm going to roll it back again to version one. Terraform is going to run. It's going to check the existing resources and against the state and work out what the plan is. The plan is that it's going to create two new resources. So I'm going to apply that. Now look at the difference here because I've got that life cycle. Terraform is actually creating my two new droplets before removing the old ones. So it's just going to take about 30 seconds for that to happen. And while that's happening, my existing application droplets are running quite happily and my health checks um, of my test script are passing successfully. You can see now that Terraform is running the provision a step because the API from DigitalOcean has marked those droplets as created. And in fact, we can see them here. We've now got four droplets instead of two. The provisioner script has checked. The health check has passed, so it, the new droplet is available. It's just going to wait those 30 seconds while it gets registered with the load balancer. And then we're starting to roll through to the new version. We got a mixture of version one and two as those are getting registered with the DigitalOcean load balancer. And eventually Terraform is going to go and it's going to start to destroy the existing resources. Once those resources have been destroyed, we're going to start to see that the version rolls completely over to version one. And that's going to start to happen in just a few seconds. So there we go. The, the two existing droplets have been deleted. And we're now running 100% on version one, which you can see on the health check script. If I look in my control panel, I've now got my two droplets. And if I take a look at my load balancer, I can see that my load balancer is healthy and it has the two new droplets registered. So that's a really straightforward and simple way to be able to do a zero downtime rolling deploy for Terraform resources such as virtual machines. The health check, you can configure this to be as complex or as simple as you need. What I could have done in my example is rather than checking the health of the individual droplets, I could have checked the health against the DigitalOcean load balancer. But again, it was just a simple example to prove this.